Hello, I'm Bernard Gersh from the Mayo Clinic, and with me today is Dr. Alan Jaffe, Professor of Medicine. He's known around the Mayo Clinic as Dr. Troponin, and he's really going to talk to us about uh, high sensitivity troponins. Welcome, Alan. Thank you, Bernard. Could I just ask you, before you get on to the high sensitivity troponins, just tell us very briefly, how should we use troponins in the diagnosis of acute myocardial infarction? Not the high sensitivity, just the standard troponin assay. Because there's a lot of confusion, and I think people feel, some people feel that everybody with an elevated troponin has a myocardial infarction, which is not the case. That's clearly not the case. And the first thing is you need the right clinical scenario. Symptoms, electrocardiographic changes, or at least suspicion, so that there may be in diabetics or in older individuals could be atypical, an atypical presentation, but nonetheless a high clinical suspicion then you need an elevated troponin above the 99th percentile, and that's a, it's critical that you use that, that cutoff value. And it depends value. on a particular lab or a particular assay or both? All, the assays vary, and mm -hmm. so it depends on the assay what the 99th percentile is. And then you want to see a rising or a falling pattern of values. That's what indicates that something going on is acute. If the values are not changing, the likelihood that that's an acute event, whether it's acute myocardial infarction or sepsis or pulmonary embolism, is much, much less. So an elevated troponin is bad news in whatever setting it occurs. It's always an adverse prognostic factor. Absolutely. But if you're going to call it myocardial infarction, it's going to have to be in a clinical context. There has to be other grounds for suspecting MI and a change in troponins. Absolutely. So now take us to the high sensitivity troponins. because. Some of us are frightened of it. We're frightened of troponin, but now the high sensitivity troponins are really getting us nervous. So tell us uh, about those, Alan, how they're going to change the background. Well, there's a, there's a little bit of confusion that I think we ought to clear up right to start, which is that there's several ways in which troponin can be used more sensitively. One is to simply start using the recommended guideline cutoff of the 99th percentile. And there have been a bunch of recent papers where that's been done. It improves sensitivity, it improves specificity, and it saves lives. And there are very good documentation with the assays we're how, using today. How, how does it improve specificity? I would have thought, if anything, it might cause more false positives. Well, it causes more elevations, but yes. if one then utilizes a changing pattern, you can identify then more, and, and the appropriate clinical circumstance, you actually end up identifying more of the right sorts of people. So we're going to have more diagnoses of myocardial infarction, well, clearly. Well, that, that that's with the standard assays. A second way you can get more sensitivity is by having the assays get more sensitive, and those assays are not yet approved in the United States, but they have been approved in the rest of the world, and they're coming. Okay, and so those assays will be much more sensitive than the ones we're using right, now. Right, so we will end up with more myocardial infarction. No okay. question. No question. Do we know, are there studies that tell us that the prognosis of a myocardial infarction diagnosed by, on the basis of a high sensitivity troponin is worse than that with a standard troponin? Or it, do we know whether it's the same? Or do we know whether it's less serious. In other words, I'm not talking about the patient with STEMI. No, STEMI is a STEMI. Absolutely. I'm talking about the patient who comes in with a non-ST elevation MI, who you would have missed with the standard assays, but now you're going to pick up a rise and a fall, and you're going to call them myocardial infarctions. Do we know that um, their prognosis uh, w will be better or worse or the same? We do know that the prognosis of individuals, even with high sensitivity, troponin assays that have just minor elevations that have a rise and a fall are clearly worse than those who do not. That's what with high we, sensitivity. With high sensitivity. Right. What we don't know yet is something that we know very well with the standard assays, which is that therapy makes a marked beneficial right. and the other, impact. I guess the other thing, Alan, I need to ask you is, in a number of our risk scores, the Timmy risk score and the Grace risk score, we use troponin elevations standard assay. We don't know yet how these are going to be integrated correct. into the new risk score. That's correct. And, and as a matter of fact, my own surmise is that this will change to some extent. Because as we get more sensitive, what do you mean change? Cha that the prognostic significance will change a little okay. bit. Because I think as opposed to seeing mostly plaque rupture events, which is what you see 
with higher values, we're going to start seeing more subtle MIs, albeit, that are fixed coronary disease with supply-demand imbalance, endothelial dysfunction. And so the mix between those who have obstructive yeah, yeah. coronary disease that is acute and either chronic coronary disease or non-obstructive coronary disease and etiology may change. And so my suspicion is that the next iteration, when we get to high sensitivity, we're going to have to be more selective and we're not going to be able to rely on everybody gets so, aggressive anticoagulation and invasive strategy. Just, lastly, in you, if you take people without an acute coronary syndrome, just people walking around ostensibly reasonably healthy, we know that having an elevated high sensitivity troponin in people with stable coronary disease is a bad prognostic factor. What are we measuring? Apoptosis? Microcell death? What would, I mean, it's incredibly powerful in well, people with stable disease. What are we measuring? Well, we're probably measuring a variety. It's, it's an integrator, therefore. So we're probably measuring apoptosis. We're probably measuring some intermittent cell death from intermittent subendocardial abnormalities or ischemia. We're probably detecting some toxic okay. effects. But the, the point is that even minor elevations, which can be associated with structural heart disease as well, in the absence of anything wrong with the coronaries, still a bad prognostic are people. still adversely prognostic. Okay, Alan, so we can conclude, I think, that um, the high sensitivity troponins are coming. They're here to stay. And you basically feel they're an optimi or you feel optimistic about them as an addition to our clinical diagnostic armamentarium, is that correct? I do, I think the, if we can educate clinicians how to use them properly in the right clinical setting, to look for a rise and a fall, and to appreciate the fact that every elevation is not due to acute coronary disease, I think we'll have a winner. If we don't, we're gonna fight these continual problems of what is an elevated troponin. Well, we're gonna keep having you back to educate us. Glad thank, to come in. Thank anytime. you for joining us.